Ibn Farouk posted a video he calls Pot the Liar, David Wood, Sam Samoon, Anthony the Crook. This title annoyed me because it implies that I don't know how to evaluate evidence. As audience, we get deceived by Sam Samoon, David Wood and Anthony Rogers. But all, not only that, then we accuse Muslim apologists to be the deceivers. In other words, we, we the audience just understand the complete opposite of truth. That insults me personally, because I know how good I am in spotting truth. So, am I such an idiot? I just understood the complete opposite of truth once again. Let's see. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa ala rasulillah. So we had a discussion, a debate. We had Sam, Shimon, Hasumu, Hasuru, and uh, David uh, Hammertime uh, Wood. Uh. This is how Muslim youth respond to his claim that he doesn't know David Wood, Sam Samoon, and Anthony Rogers. Whose footage? Huh? Whose footage? Uh, David's recording, you're recording, right? Huh? Who's recording? Who's David? David Wood? Let me be the first to apologize. Ibn Farouk, let me give you a friendly advice. In a video you call Spot the Liar, you shouldn't start with a lie. You know who is David Wood, Sam Samoon, and Anthony Rogers. And what was the other guy? Anthony the Crook Rogers. So these guys came out, and I thought we had a good debate. And we at One Message Foundation are posting the entire debate in its entirety. We're not cutting out any part of it. From the beginning until the end, in two parts, we're posting the whole debate. We want honest Christians, Muslims, Jews, atheists, Hindus, and everybody else to see exactly what happened. We're putting the whole thing out there. We're not snipping anything out. We're not putting the whole thing out, right? What's interesting is these guys, they came with like tons of cameras and cameramen all over the place, but they're putting little clip bits out. They don't want to put the whole conversation. I wonder why. I wonder why they're ashamed to show what happened. Ibn Farouk had good attitude in this debate. He seemed confident. He repeatedly said, why you are interrupting me with style and cracked some good jokes. In this video, we will investigate whether his arguments were true. For example, in the debate with David Wood, Mohammed Hijab had also good attitude. But every argument he made was embarrassingly wrong. Despite that, Muslims still today think he won this debate. Then, we had the interview of Hakikatsu with the apostate prophet. Muslim again celebrated how Hakikatsu won this exchange because he had attitude. In this interview, Hakikatsu said things like, slavery is better than employment. Then we had the surprise debate of Muhammad Hijab with the apostate prophet. Then again, Muhammad Hijab, Hijab looked confident and had good attitude. And Muslim again were gloating how good he did and he won this exchange. Never mind, he admitted many Korans and he admitted Sharia is immoral. So, forgive me if I don't, I'm not impressed with attitude. Let's see if his arguments are true. But anyway, we're putting the whole thing out. So you can judge yourself which belief makes sense or doesn't belief make sense. And, you know, that, that's up to the people. When we have the Islamic Aqidah, we presented it. They have their belief, you know, one plus one plus one plus soul and plus body and this and that. One, whoever you want to follow. What I found distasteful, and, and it's unfortunate because I thought we were having an honest conversation, is what they did. They made a little video on their way home. I guess it was a long, sad drive. Like when you lose a soccer match and you're sitting together on the way back after losing a match. And they, they put this thing about Uthman got caught lying. Now, let's be honest. I mean, the, the issue was a hadith. And, and I want you guys to understand what happened. They claim... We will take your advice and see what happened. Okay, let's see what happened. At one point in the discussion, 
I brought up the fact that the Quran, according to various hadith narrations, is going to intercede for Muslims on the day of resurrection. And in addition to that, I pointed out in certain versions, it tells us that the Quran will do so by appearing as a pale man. When Uthman asked us to show that to him, I simply mentioned that it's found in Termidi, and he said, where? I found this kind of uh, humorous because every time I hear Muslims cite Hadith, they simply say it's in Bukhari, it's in Muslim, it's, you know, so forth. But he wanted us to give him the exact number and so forth. However, David was standing right there next to me and he pulled up a version of the Hadith that's found in Ibn Majah. And I actually hadn't even seen that one before. I was familiar with the one in Termidi. And when David brought this up, Uthman replied, by saying, oh, no, 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 that's a weak hadith. But then David pointed out to him what says right here uh, in the Darus Salaam, it says it is Hassan. So I went to sunnah.com, which is the most popular Muslim site about hadith on the net. And it, I found this hadith and it says, the Quran will come on the day of resurrection like a pale man and will say, I am the one that kept you awake at night and make you thirsty during the day. The grade of this um, hadith is Hassan. That means good. Reference, Sunnah ibn Majah 3781. Uh, in book reference, book 33, hadith 125. English translation, volume 5, book 33, Hadith 3781. But in opposition, you know, Sheikh Uthman kept insisting, no, 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 it's weak. Here is uh, the clip of Sheikh Uthman where you can see him saying, no, 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 it's not Hassan, it's weak, uh, it's, it's naive, it's not to be trusted. My understanding, which I have from other Muslims, which is part and parcel of why I hold them and have read in the Islamic sources, that the Quran itself does intercede for Muslims, or will, on the Day of Judgment, right? The Quran will appear as a pale man and will say that he was the Muslim's companion in life and will intercede for him. Is that not correct? Can you give me a reference for that? That's in the Hadith. Which Hadith? Seriously, you don't think I'm going to go back? I mean, like, I don't know. Are you saying that's not in the hadith? Uh, that is not in any authentic hadith that okay. I've ever read. So you'd say it's not It is proven in the Sunnah that the Quran will intercede for its companions on the day of resurrection. Abu Mamah al Bahili said, I've heard the Messenger of Allah say, Read the Quran, for it will come on the day of resurrection, interceding for its companions. Imam Ahmed narrated from Abdullah ibn Amir, the Messenger of Allah said, Fasting and the Quran will intercede for a person on the day of resurrection. Fasting will say, O Lord, that kept him from his food and desires during the day, let me intercede for him. And the Quran will say, I kept him from sleeping during the night, let me intercede for him. And they will be allowed to intercede. Fact. According to authentic Sunnah, the Quran will intercede in the day of resurrection. Discussion. A. Some scholars take that literally. The Quran will literally speak. B. Some scholars take it metaphorically. Ibn Farouk subscribed to Ibn Hanbal's literal interpretation of scriptures. That's why he's so reluctant to admit the pale man expression. Because he needs to read everything literally. Ibn Hanbal was a scholar in early Islamic history that began the movement that we now call radical Islam. In opposition to the Mutazilites, the rationalists, that thought critical thinking should be applied when interpreting Islamic scriptures, Ibn Hanbal preached critical thinking should be completely absent when interpreting Islamic scriptures. And he began all the problems we recognize now with Islam. Terrorism, 
opposition to science and development, oppression of women, jihad, martyrdom, etc. So, the toxicity in Islam we recognize now began with Ibn Hanbal, a scholar who thought that we should interpret the Quran literally, like donkeys. Ibn uh, Farouk, because he has to interpret the Quran like a donkey, literally, without a shred of critical thinking, that's why he's so reluctant to admit expressions like the Quran will appear like a pale man. And you spend, you, you call this as a debate, you spend the time talking about, uh, do you know what El Mul Kalam? Like, what? Do you know what Al Mul Kalam? And when Anthony, he said to you, it's philosophy, you said to him, <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you are wrong. You do not know, don't you? You idiot donkey. Sorry for insulting donkeys. Is it this is your scholar saying that Elmul Kalam is philosophy? Oh, you know what? I think you know better than him. I mean, you are higher. I mean, come on. Look, first, I will prove you that he is higher than you. His beard is longer than your beard. And he lives in Saudi Arabia, so he do not need to compromise. Hey, Sheikh, what is Elmul Kalam? Uh, Anthony Roger, he said it is philosophy. What say you? I can feel Bukhari when you said that he is working on Kalam and he is working on the book and the Kalam is a book of philosophy. Oh, oh! The Kalam is a book of philosophy. It is nothing but a philosophy introduction. So when you idiot, you say to Anthony Roger, who is not a Muslim, he doesn't speak Arabic, and he do not, should not have even a knowledge about it. I mean, this is not his field. And you say to him, you laugh at him. And you say to him, <laughs> I know this is coming. You don't speak Hebrew and you don't speak Arabic. And Elijah is God with us. <laughs> when every Muslim scholar agree that this is why it's called the Ilmul Kalam, you idiot, which means the science of using words, philosophy. Stupid idiot. That's the effect. These people literally think the word philosophy is a bad word. Philosophy means philos to sophias, friend with wisdom. So this guy, these guys think that wisdom is a bad word. Okay, this is the effect of Ibn Hanbal to Islam. Does Ibn Farouk deserves the mockery of Christian Prince. Let us see what he said to Adoni Roger. And you can correct me if that's not I, your I view. do not believe in Ilm al-Kalam, so obviously that's not my view. But I'm just using Kalam in the sense of theology, like a key. Do you know what Kalam is? Yeah. What is Kalam? Well, it's philosophy. But, well, no, uh, it's not. But it's, that's falsafa. Uh, well, but it's... So you don't know what Kalam is? It's the same is. idea. <laughs> it is not. Okay, well, go ahead. What is Kalam? Uh, go ahead. Listen, Anthony, what is Kalam? Because you brought it up, but obviously you don't understand what Kalam is. I, I'm, what I'm is just, Kalam? I'm just using it in the sense of people. I understand you're using it. Of Islamic Akida and coming to certain conclusions. I know that your methodology would be Quran and Sunnah. That's how you derive your Akida. Anthony, you brought up Kalam. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking you, what is Kalam? Ilm al Kalam. What is it? It's not philosophy is falsafa. So what's Ilm al Kalam? They're related concepts. What are it's basically theology? It is not. From a Christian perspective, that's how uh, you view it. It's an, a Kalam as you're using it, understanding Islamic aqidah, right? Mm -hmm. What is Kalam? That, but that's what I'm telling you. You don't know. He's saying that's how he's using it. Okay, okay, I got you. So let me explain it to him okay. now. You go ahead. Anthony, you good? All right. So, philosophy is called falsafa. That's basic philosophy. Kalam is use of certain Greek principles, not philosophy in general, understand? In the use of understanding aqaid, and this is something that was brought on by the Asharis. And that is the class of civilizations right, right there. The, the Western civilization that we now call the human civilization. Okay, the human civilization that is based on critical thinking and ancient Greek philosophy 
And on the other hand, we have the Islamic civilization that is based on superstition, revelations, and a literal interpretation of Islamic scriptures. For example, when Muslims want to know something, they don't think. They say, ah, what Muhammad did in this case? You see the difference? So they, so now, these people want to replace the Western civilization, the human civilization, because now the Western civilization is the human civilization, what we see around us, in other words. They want to replace that with the Islamic civilization. Some kind of, uh, you know, before the Enlightenment, before the Age of Reason. That's another species, my friend. The human species won't think. We will just follow like ants, like bees. We'll just follow like bees, whatever Mohammed said. Ah, I have a problem. What to do now? Ah, let's not think. Let's open a book. Ah, what Mohammed did? That is what you want to do, eh? Okay, now, guys, we recognize the source of all the problems in Islam. That is, that is the source. Well, that's fine. If you say it's not authentic, then that's... So, to say the Qur'an will appear as a pale man... What did you say it would be with the, the Quran will intercede for Muslims and will say that it as was, a pale man. Uh, well, that's that's an intermediate hadith, for example. Mm. Let's look. Uh, I can look oh, for it. Let's look for it. Uh, so, no, no, hold on. Because see, I like to discuss on evidences. So, if can I find a hadith in a Tirmidhi that says the Quran will be a pale man? Let's just find that, and then I will explain from there. The the issue was a hadith, and and I want you guys to understand what happened. They claimed there was a hadith in a Tirmidhi, Jamia Tirmidhi, is a book of hadith written by Abu Isa Tirmidhi, that said that the Quran will come on the Day of Judgment in the form of a pale man and intercede for its reciter. Now, the hadith, I told them, and this was, again, I wasn't prepared for this, I was just there, and they brought this up, they had looked it up, whatever, I had not, they brought it up. But at that time, because I've taught hadith, and I have a master's degree in hadith, I knew that hadith is not in Tirmidhi, and I told them this is not authentic hadith, and this is not in a Tirmidhi. Uh-oh, it's not in Tirmidhi. Okay, continue, I will make a comment about that, and then people will die laughing at you. And you'll see them in the video on their phones, they're trying to find it, and they cannot, because it's not in a Tirmidhi, they were lying. This is a lie. Maybe they did it out of... Uh, maybe it's a mistake. Oh no, they are lying, my friend. <laughs> lying. First of all, Abdul, does it really make a difference if it's a Tirmidhi? I mean, all your books is garbage. And you yourself, you just admit it. You just said it's life. Christian Prince is right in this one. Like it makes any difference. The science of Hadith is a joke. Okay, it's uh, a form of broken telephone. It's a joke. It, hadiths are urban myths of Arabia. This is what are, are the Hadiths. The method you have to authenticate the Hadith is a joke, my friend. But let's continue. Which means you are saying to us that it doesn't matter what book, our book is boo-boo. Boo-boo? I cannot use the word shit in YouTube. That's not right. Let us say it. So, I'll Guys, you will think Christian Prince is insulting these people. The, the Hadith, the books of Hadith are shit. Shit is an understatement. Shit is an understatement. Okay. They, they are some psychopath. Psy psy psychotic urban myths, immoral psychotic urban myths. Our books are a piece of shit. So it doesn't matter where you find it, we have a lot of shit there. That's what you are saying to them, you coward. It is you witnessing to us and now making a video to us to say to us, our books is full of shit about the prophet shit. And now we are going to delete it and we will say it is weak shit. Excuse my <clears throat> shitty conversation. But you forced me to say it. I mean, people don't dare to say the word, right? Say it as it is. Who like it, like it, don't like it, get lost. 
You are making a video for us to say to us that our books is a trust, not a trustworthy. We Muslims we lie about our prophet, and that makes sense. We Muslim we lie even about our prophet. Mistake. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. It was a mistake, uh -huh. but it's not in a terribly. <coughs> they both. Yeah, just shut up, stupid idiot. I mean, obviously you do not know what are you talking about. I mean, I don't know what to say to you. I mean, what's wrong with you? Here we go. You are a potato, son of a potato. And Abi Hurairah, and the Prophet sallallahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the way, salam, don't forget to salam. يجيء القرآن يوم القيامة فيقول يا رب حله فإتسا ترى يبي درست. So and the the Quran will come in the day of judgment, right? Right. Here, a Turmudi did not mention the word man. He mentioned that the Quran will come and he will be a lawyer to you and he will defend you. And this is what they are saying that that a turmudi dhakara ba'da, which means he mentioned part of the hadith. And this is the reference. You are a donkey and you are an idiot. There was a hadith in a tirmidhi. Jami a tirmidhi is a book of hadith written by Abu Isa a tirmidhi that said that the Quran will come on the day of judgment in the form of a pale man and intercede for its reciter. Now, the hadith, I told them, and this was, again, I wasn't prepared for this, I was just there, and they brought this up, they had looked it up, whatever, I had not, they brought it up, but at that time, because I've taught hadith, and I have a master's degree in hadith, I knew that hadith is not in Tirmidhi, and I told them this is not authentic hadith, and this is not in a Tirmidhi, and you'll see them in the video on their phones, they're trying to find it, and they cannot, because it's not in a Tirmidhi, they were lying. They didn't lie, Josh in Urtumudi. It, it didn't have the whole hadith. It didn't mention the pale man. That is what happened. But then they gave you another hadith. You lied when you you pretended, ah, you, there isn't any hadith like this. Then you admitted you were lying initially when you said, ah, it's a hadith, it's not authentic. Okay, so first you pretended like, there isn't such, hmm, a pale man. Pale man. No, no, no. Ah, it's weak. <laughs> so, why all the pale man? Pale. When you knew there is a hadith say, referring to the Quran as a pale man. This is a lie. Maybe they did it out of mistake. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. It was a mistake. But it's not in a termidi. They both said it is. Here, you can hear it. That's that's in a termidi hadith. That's that's in a termidi hadith. I know it's in termidi, but first I know it's in termidi, but first. Uthman asked us to show that to him. I simply mentioned that it's found in termidi, and he said, "Where?" I found this kind of uh, humorous because every time I hear Muslims cite hadith, they simply say it's in Bukhari, it's in Muslim, it's you know so forth. But he wanted us to give him the exact number and so forth. However, David was standing right there next to me. And he pulled up a version of the hadith that's found in Ibn Majah, and I actually hadn't even seen that one before. I was familiar with the one in Termidi. Now, both of them claimed it was in a Termidi. I, 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 I'm challenging them. I have a Termidi here. They, they can get it. Find the hadith that you claim is in a Termidi and a Termidi, and it's not there. So you are not telling the truth. Here, a Termidi did not mention the word man. He mentioned that the Quran will come and he will be a lawyer to you and he will defend you. And this is what they are saying, that that a turmudi dhakara ba'da, which means he mentioned part of the hadith. And this is the reference. You are a donkey and you are an idiot. Qala Rasulullah yajiu al-Qur'an yawm al-qiyamah karrajul shahib The Prophet of Allah, he said, the Quran, he come to you as a pale man and the rest of that. Hadith, and then read with me. Abdul, potato. Qulta in the turmudi baada. Do you see it? The turmudi have part of it. Urtumudi made a reference of the hadith. He just made the reference, and he didn't mention the the pale man. He said it with his own words and said, I made the reference of the Hadith. And he, he described it with different words. So Urtumudi did mention the Hadith. 
He just made a short reference and said, in this hadith, uh, the Quran will intercede for you. And underline it says, this is a reference to this hadith. Okay. Now, please continue. That's the next is the, the actual lie. Because they gave you another hadith. <laughs> It's okay. I give them the benefit of doubt. It's a mistake. But what happens is, then they claim that I was lying, or I got caught lying, because I told them that this hadith had da'af. It was weak. Now, this is where I really want their viewers to pay attention. This is their academic standard. They can't claim as if they have this knowledge, Sam thinks he knows Islam, and Anthony, and David. They don't know. They're Google scholars. This is, this is the extent of their knowledge is Googling. That's what they were doing, Googling the hadith. They don't, so you see these books, this is what we study. I have a master's degree in hadith. So what they did, they Googled a random site, and when they found a site that, said, that mentioned the hadith, even though they admitted that was an Ibn Majah, they were wrong about it being in a Tirmidhi. They were like, oh, it's Hassan, it's reliable, and you said it's Zaif. Not understanding the science. I have a mass, I do takhreej work here, right? I check hadith. Now that hadith that they mentioned from Ibn Majah, you see the video, he says from Ibn Majah. Here it is on your screen. The hadith is in fact Zaif. I know because I taught Aqidah and I taught this hadith. Now. Here it is in your screen. Look at the coward. What he posted in the screen, he did not post the book of Ibn Majah. Zoom in. Potato, liar, fraud. This is not the book of the Hadith. This is a book written by Al Alabani, a guy he just died a few years ago. It's called Da'ifu Sunani Ibn Majah. Why you don't show us Ibn Majah book where it says it is Da'if? So what you are trying to say that someone here wrote a book about the hadith of Ibn Majah in 1995 or 6 and he said that is uh, this hadith is Da'if. And look what he showed us in the screen. Da'if. Do you know why he cut it off? Because he is a coward and he is a dummy. He thinks that nobody knows Arabic. And he is going to speak only to David Wood and Sam Shamoon and Anthony Roger. They don't speak Arabic. Where is the rest? Potato. This is what it says in this book, which means even in this book you were not honest and you are a coward. This is the book of Al-Labani, and I'm zooming in so people, they can read it in the screen. And there is more details about this hadith, you cut it off. Why? Because it says, and let us see what it says, why I want to talk about it. Let us go there. <laughs> Coward, potato, dummy. Let us see. Let me open the reference. Give me a second. Oh boy. Oh, mommy. I want every Muslim who is listening to check the reference we are going to show on the screen. But we will find it, just wait, give me a minute. Yeah, here we go. This is the book which he is quoting for us, this potato. And this is what he quoted for us in the corner. That's part only. Da'if 286. Sorry, 826. And this is exactly what is here in Arabic. 826. Da'if. So here it says Da'if. Here it says Da'if. The numbers are the same. But he cut off the rest of the hadith, where the hadith says, Yahtamilu Tahseen. And it is possible 
to be accepted as good right next to it coward and as long you accepted the book of al alabani to prove your point now you cannot say i don't accept al alabani and listen you donkey this is al alabani in the book of the, the book name al silsul al sahiha al alabani volume number 7 Published not by Dar es Salaam, as you said. And by the way, you stupid idiot, you said to them, this is Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam, they publish al Albani too. Donkey. They are just a publisher. They are not a, a, Dar es Salaam is not a sheikh. He said to them, Dar es Salaam. Dar es Salaam, they are quoting al Albani, you idiot. Sometimes they put the name there of the scholar. Or sometimes if there's too many scholars, they don't put the names. Read with me. So this is the, 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 the authentic chain. The book of who? Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Alabani, the Zucchini guy. Hadith number 2829, Sahih, Sahih. Should I shout lower more? What he said about it? يجيء القرآن يوم القيامة كالرجل الشاحب يقول لصاحبه هل صاحبه هل تعرفني? The Quran will come in the judgment day. As a pale man, and he will say to him, Do you know me? So now, you Abdul, as long you agree that the one who can judge between us and you is Al Alabani, who Al Alabani is saying it's a Sahih. You want to say to me in different book, he says it is weak? Well, if he is a stupid, this is your business. He changes mind. Ibn Farouk, Christian Prince, change your oils, change your back. You have a new buck. Okay. He and you are a liar. Okay. That is elaborated lie. This was not a mistake. This was you cutting out stuff. This was you taking a scholar from 1992 that give a reference to the other scholar and pretend it's weak although the other scholar says it's strong. Then he he went to the other scholar and it says, and he says it's strong. So that was a lie. And you you thought of this lie. You you made you cut and paste. Okay, so we spotted who is the liar. Ibn Farouk. Okay, Muslims, now that we know that this is an authentic hadith, Ibn Farouk, with all this conundrum, he practically admitted that this doesn't make sense in a literal interpretation. Okay, so, but then he lied and he claimed that it's not an authentic hadith. What do you do now that we know that it's an authentic hadith? What do you do now? When he already admitted that there is a problem there, what do you do now? Okay. Thank you very much.